Hi everyone, Brie Firth here, and today I'm sharing another card hop-in video. Uh, for the month of January, the theme is Crafty Organization. And one thing about Crafty Organization is for physical products, one technique that works for me might not work for you, as everyone's craft room is different shapes and different sizes. So I want to share a technique that works for a lot of people because it's organization over the internet. And without this tool, I, I would be going crazy. Uh, this tool keeps my head on straight. Um, I'm really good at spreadsheets out in the real world. And so it's really nice that with this tool, I can bring that talent into my crafty side. And this tool is Airtable. Like I said, I use this a lot. <laughs> it is what keeps me sane. Uh, you can use it for many, many different things. As you can see here, I have a lot of bases created, which are kind of the database or this the main kind of spreadsheet spreadsheets are called bases or templates, I guess. But the nicest thing about Airtable is that it is completely free. 100% free. And that's, they have a pro version that you can pay for. I don't, I haven't needed it. Um, I, I loved the free trial of it, but the free version works for me. So as you can see here, I have, like I mentioned before, different bases. I have my content calendar. Uh, I created a table for card inventory. And I'll show you real quick. Uh, I used this table for when I was selling cards online. Uh, didn't really work out for me, but that's okay. Uh, I also use this, the whole online card selling thing, I mean, but um, I also can use this spreadsheet for craft fairs, things like that, to keep track of what cards I've sold, uh, what category are the cards, things like that. Um, you can also just keep one that is just a gallery of the cards that you created which is really nice to do. We're gonna to get to, into more detail about how these different bases work, but I just wanna give you an overview of all the different uses that I use Airtable for. Um, you could use it to keep track of your craft supplies. Uh, I know there's another video on this hop that goes into this more detail. I just wanted to show you real quick how I use it. Um, so I can keep track of stencils, dies, digi stamps, and then regular stamps. I know a lot of people use Evernote and a lot of people are switching over to Airtable. Uh, use whatever works for you or, you know, stick with what you've started because I know creating craft collections, it, it takes a lot of work. <laughs> I have a hard time keeping up with mine. So um, kudos to those who do. Uh, this spreadsheet's kind of sad, but if you're like me, you buy a lot of online coloring classes or just craft classes in general, and then you never actually do them. And as you can see, I didn't even take the time to fill out the spreadsheet yet. I created it with high hopes. Uh, I haven't gotten very far yet. Let's just say yet, right? Uh, but with this spreadsheet, I have the name of the class, the course host, uh, what medium the class is featuring, so maybe Copic markers or watercoloring with Tombow markers or watercolor paints or something like that. Uh, did I download the PDFs for the course? Have I downloaded or purchased the images? Uh, what progress have I made? Clearly, I haven't made very much. Um, what's the current lesson that I'm on? Maybe you're on lesson four, lesson five, something like that. Uh, and then notes. Just Notes is just a nice little thing to have on a spreadsheet just just because maybe and then you could list maybe if you enjoyed the class, if you thought the teacher was great, you know, things like that. Um, and then you can also create a spreadsheet to share your wish list of stamp companies. Um, you could have one for an individual company like I have here for art impressions, or you could make create a master spreadsheet of multiple companies, maybe like Simon Says Stamp, uh, Kindred Stamps, Art Impressions. These are just ones that I buy from a lot. Um, all wrapped up into one 
wish list versus having a wish list on each of their websites or, you know, an individual wish list. Uh, it, you could create a master one. So you could kind of, you know, when it's payday, you could work down that wish list. <laughs> uh, or you can just not use a wish list and just buy whatever you wanted. Um, but that's just another op- way that you can use an air table base. And then I also use it to keep track of your quilt projects. You could do this for your, for if you get card kits or whatever. Um, I buy a lot of card kits and then I just throw them into my closet. But um, I cr- so far I've created one for my quilt projects because I have bought so many quilt projects. And this way I can keep a running list of the, the projects that I've purchased or the quilt kits that I've purchased. And then I can work through them individually or keep notes on the progress of that I've made on the quilt kits, uh, things like that, or where I've purchased the fabric or things like that. Anyways, let's get to the reason why we are here. Uh, so we're going to focus on a blog post calendar. And as you can see, this spreadsheet's kind of hectic, but bear with me. I will explain it. And this, like, and the best thing about Airtable is it's all customizable. So this may work for me, but it might not work for you. But you can customize it to make this work better for you. And you could be on one design team, you could be on a handful of design teams, or you could just be creating for yourself. But this is a nice way to keep yourself organized and on track and, you know, hold yourself accountable for posting these things, especially if you're just starting and you're scared and you're like, I don't know if I want to share my stuff. Well, this way you can set yourself up to share and keep yourself on a nice routine schedule. So let's start off by discussing um, all of these columns start by having column title, but the column title is actually a field type. If you've worked with other software before, you might know the difference between different field types, but I wanna show you all the different field types that Airtable has to offer. So this post name, which is the, my blog post name, is considered a single line text uh, field type. And I'm not gonna go through and explain all of these, uh, but these are just all the different kinds of field types that you can use. And I use a good variety of them uh, within these columns, and we're gonna work through the ones that I use and how I use them. So up next is the publish date and time. So maybe you have a design team that likes to have their stuff published by midnight, or you know another team likes to have it published by 5 a.m. This is a nice way to keep track of when, what time and what day things are due. Uh, so, and this is the way that I sort my projects. So the projects that are upcoming, uh, they're higher up on the list versus projects that are pushed farther out. Um, and it will auto sort things. So if you add something in and you're like, oh man, I want to do something next week, it will auto jump it up into the into that versus having to refresh a list. Next, I have project status. Uh, so each of my, let's go down here. Oop, sorry. Let's go down here a little bit go down here and as you can see all of my entries start as a pick stamp why because i haven't picked out the products that i'm using yet so they start as picked stamp and then they can move to i've made the projects next i go on to i photograph the projects then i have watermarked the projects and then i've uploaded the photos to the blog and then finally, I have scheduled the blog post. So this is a nice way for me to keep track of where I'm at with this project. Um, that's why the ones up here are mostly all, excuse me, scheduled blog posts. I keep <laughs> missing that. That's why all of these up here are mostly scheduled blog posts and the ones down below are pick stamp. And then there's some watermarked photos in here. These are the ones that haven't even made it to the blog yet. I'm, I'm working on it. <laughs> so next, um, we have the complete category, which we'll come back to. But then we have these Insta, Facebook, and Pinterest. So whenever I post a project on my blog, I like to follow up by sharing my blog link 
on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. So this keeps helps me keep track of what, if if and when I have posted on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest for each of these blog posts. And it's nice because this field is the checkbox. As you can see, if I hover over it, there's a blank square. So once it's done, I can click that blank square and say that I've done it. So then once I have checked the mark for all three of these social medias, which, you know, not everyone shares on Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest. So you can customize that to, sh you know, maybe you just share on Instagram. Maybe you don't even have a blog. Maybe you just want to share on Instagram. Well, you can use a spreadsheet to keep track of that as well. So whenever I've, uh, excuse me, so whenever I have shared it everywhere, I've scheduled it, I've shared it everywhere, it's gone live, all that things, then I come over and I click the complete and then it vanishes from my blog post list. Or, sorry, excuse me, my scheduled blog post spreadsheet. And then I will show you um, where those all go to my kind of graveyard view, <laughs> as I like to call it. Okay, but anyways, let's move on for now. So next we have Design Team Company. This way you can kind of, it's just kind of like a category organization visual for me because it organizes it organizes them by color so all these pink ones are art impressions uh, purple ones are kindred stamps it just for me it's a kind of more of a visual cue of oh this po post is for this specific company and it doesn't even have to be that you're on design teams maybe you just love to use art impression projects or products and so you post a lot of their stuff and so you could actually just label it with art impressions. You don't have to, it doesn't, this category, this column doesn't have to be labeled design team company or things like that. It could just be, you know, your featured project company. And then, which would coordinate well with this featured item. So this is also another single line text uh, column where I list the featured stamp set, die set, or stencil that I'm using for my blog posts. It's just nice to keep track of that there because when I have things, I can schedule things out ahead of time. Like, oh, I want to use this stamp set for this specific post way before I've even created the project. And then next I have where to post. So maybe uh, your company has a blog, your design team company has a blog or a YouTube channel that they want you to post on. You can keep track of, okay, I need to post on the company's blog, my blog, their YouTube channel. It, it just helps me keep track of where, where this information needs to go. And then finally, I have my blog link, which turns into an actual clickable URL link, which is, which is pretty handy. So the nice thing about this is maybe, you know, keeping everything in a spreadsheet view isn't best for you. Well, guess what? Airtable has a way to transform this data into a view such as multiple different views, but into a view like a calendar view so that you can see how your blog posts are scheduled out throughout the month, how many you have coming up this week or next week, or even next month. And then maybe like you create something just, you know, because you want to versus, you know, your blog post schedule. And I could look ahead at February and be like, oh, I have all of these Thursdays open. This would be some nice space to throw in some, um, some cards that I just want to make for fun. Uh, but that's another view. Another view is this gallery view. And the nice thing about that is you can just see the images of everything that you've created. So maybe if you're more of a visual person and you wanna be like, oh, I wanna go back and I wanna see that snowman card that I made. Well, then you can go and be like, oh, look, there it is. And then you can pull up all the information on it. Um, another nice thing about this view is you wanna be like, oh, I wanna see all of the cards that I made for a certain company. So I could go over here and I could go down to design team company and I could be like, oh, I want to see all of my art impressions cards. And then all of these are blank because these are the upcoming posts that I have scheduled out. But I could come down here and see all of these art impressions cards that I have created. Which isn't, it's nice to go back and view these as well. So this is what I call my post graveyard. <laughs> it's just nice to have a place where all of your 
completed projects are listed because then you can be like, oh, look, I have, you know, I've posted a lot of stuff. I have accomplished a good bit. Um, but as you can see here, this one has an additional column called G Slides, which was Google Slides, because I used to keep all of my cards in kind of like a photo album, which was a Google Slideshow. I don't do that anymore, so it's not on my uh, all posts table. Uh, but it is here. But that's the nice other nice thing is you can hide fields that you no longer use. I'm going to keep it on this spreadsheet, but I've hidden it from my other ones. Uh, so as you can see, I have you know, shared it on this, all the social medias, and that's why it's clicked complete, but it has all the same information here. Now, if you go back to this all post table and you're like, Brian, this is still super intimidating having everything listed out. Well, that's why I've created this upcoming posts page, which also takes advantage of all these filtering and sorting fields. So once again, I've sorted the data or sorted this uh, posts by when the publishing dates are due. But I've come over here and I've, I have the same filter as my all post page where if complete is blank, then it stays on this spreadsheet. But on this spreadsheet, I also have when published date is within the next two weeks. So that way it's a very minimized scale to work or minimized list of to do for upcoming blog posts. Um, if you have the pro feature of Airtable, one thing that I really, I uh, liked about that that I no longer use because I like sticking with the free version because who doesn't like free? Uh, there's this option of color and it says upgrade now to use the pro plan to use the color. But you could actually set color conditioning where I used it so that like if there was a post coming up within, you know, the next few days, it would be red. But if it was okay, and then say a post was due within the next week, then the uh, row color would be yellow. And if it was greater than a week or two, then the post would, or the row would be green. So that way it would say, hey, I need to get these done. Or, you know, hey, you have the week to do these. Or then the green would be, hey, you got, you got a little bit more time. But to, since I don't have the, pre, the pro version, I created this upcoming posts page instead, which is just another view of more filtered data. So that's how I keep track of my blog posts. Next, I can move on to discussing how I keep track of my videos. So I have the YouTube title here. Well, a, a abbreviated version of YouTube title. The date and time whenever they're supposed to post. Uh, I haven't done very well at keeping up with this one. I focus mostly on my scheduled blog posts, so sorry it's so bare. But I also don't have a lot of videos, so... Anyways, moving on. And then I have video status. And for video status, I have recorded, schedule, or recorded, and then uploaded to PC. And then I've, I use a VSDC video editor. So that's why I have it there. Maybe you have iMovie editor. So you could call it iMovie editing. Um, and then I have, once that's done, I would put it as ready for voiceover. And then once I've done the voiceover and everything and, and expect it's excuse me exported from my video editing software I could upload it to YouTube and then I, it would be moved uh, as sorry listed as scheduled and next sorry that was a lot of words <laughs> next we have uh, the photo category which is nice to keep track of the image that we're going to use for the YouTube feature image and I have the done filter for my YouTube videos as well. So once I hit done, it would vanish from this table. And then the design team company, as you mentioned, it doesn't have to be design teams. I have card hop in here. It's just a nice way to coordinate these projects with companies. And then the featured items and YouTube link. So I'm gonna walk through creating a, a, a record with you guys. It's gonna be a duplicate of, of the card hop and record, but I just wanna show you guys how it's done. So see as it's kind of floating, it's gonna float kind of towards the top because it doesn't have a date time yet, but it once we actually put the date and time in, it's gonna place itself. So we have card hop in for January. And then the date and time, this post is January 28th at 
3 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we are recording this video. And then the YouTube feature image I want to use. Oh boy, it's... Oh, sorry, <laughs> just blanked out for a second. Excuse my mess. And then you hit upload and it doesn't take long for these pictures to upload at all. And then we would type, start typing CA for card hopping, click on that. And then Airtable is our featured item. And then once I have uploaded it to YouTube, I can come back and add the video link. So I have kind of showed you all what I wanted to show you using Airtable. And say, Bri maybe you say, Brianne, I am not great at creating spreadsheets. I have no idea where to begin. Well, Airtable has an answer for that. You can come over here to their templates, which are also all free. And look, here's a content calendar. First thing, I started with their content calendar and then I freestyled it to work fit what's best for me. It tells you the perfect uses for the, for the base and then comes down here and you can actually kind of, you can play with this, play with their example spreadsheet here and then flip through their different views. And then if you're like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll start that. Then you click this use template as a starting base. And once again, you can customize these templates to work for you. So I hope this video was super helpful for you. Uh, and, and I hope this has actually uh, inspired you guys to use Airtable to organize your blog posts or even start to use it uh, to organize your craft collection. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Uh, in the description of this video, I have put a link so that you can find Airtable. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope you come back soon for more crafty goodness. Thank you.